I hate uncomfortable clothes, I hate people running away from arguments, and I really hate running out of yarn in the middle of a project. But hate can be a strong word often flippantly used daily, but should it be? Is feeling hate okay? A growing number of people are choosing to live a more positive life, but should we do away with negativity and the word hate? To help us answer that question, we've brought in Jeannie Chamnus, a, a licensed professional counselor and owner of Chamnus Counseling. While Jeannie says every emotion is valid, she's here to help us explore the emotion and find out if it's serving us or whether we should just leave hate in the past. Welcome. Yes. Nice to be here. Thank I you. I mean, so I, those are some examples of some flippant uses of the word yes. hate. And, and I'm not yes. sure, like, oh, we you know, do, that. do does that? Yeah, but the yarn thing is very valid, absolutely. So. Thank you. <laughs> See, validation. Um, right. yeah. But when we say, is hate okay? Let's just start there. Is mm -hmm. hate okay? Well, first of all, I want to make sure that we clarify that today we're talking about the emotion of hate, not actions based on Correct. hate. Because well, that is a very big difference. Big, big so distinction. we're talking about how it impacts the individual feeling those feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and hate, there's a lot of things that can come from it. That is, it allows the other person or the other entity that, ha that you are hating to have the power in that situation. There's an expression that I've seen attributed to anybody from Buddha to Carrie Fisher, um, that hate is like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die. So you're the one that's being harmed by this feeling and you're projecting it towards someone else. So are you gonna let them have that power to cause you that much harm? Or are you gonna figure out a way to manage this and to address it in a different way. Right, because you're saying like hate is actually hurting the person hating the right, other person, right? Yes. Right. So yeah, uh, that is an interesting um, um, uh, like analogy, I like that, but yeah. swallowing the poison and expecting the other person to die, yes. But you also say that like you would probably even say you're not gonna hate someone's feelings of hate, right? Like right. that all feelings, we say all feelings are valid um, and that maybe understanding them and sitting with them for a minute, but then recognizing why it might be harming you more. Exactly, it is an opportunity to explore why is it causing this intense reaction? Why am I feeling so strongly about this? You know, shame, jealousy, um, disappointment. These are all things that can cause that intense reaction. And it really is an opportunity to say, why? What, what is making this trigger so badly? And what can I do instead of feeling this, this awful way? Mm -hmm. Do you think sometimes some of it stems from just a feeling that you've lost control or something? Like Absolutely. somebody didn't do what you wanted. You didn't have the control. And so that, that's all you're maybe feeling like you're left with is anger. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I, it's 100%. I, yeah, the control is such a motivating feeling. So that's another way to approach it. Um, some people can use hate or that extreme anger as a motivator. Yeah, tell me I can't do it and watch me do it sort of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, right. just tell me I can't. I may, me. I may not have done that before. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can we talk about how hate harms you? I mean, I love the analogy of swallowing poison and thinking the other person's. Yeah. But let's talk about some of the um, ways that you say it can really harm maybe your well-being. Oh, mm -hmm. well, first of all, I mean, how you, when you feel really angry or feel that thing that's closest to hate, doesn't it just feel yucky? Your stomach mm -hmm. hurts, your head hurts, you don't sleep. But it has long-term long -term impacts on your health as well. You know, mm -hmm. it can you know, increase your risk of heart disease. Um, and various other things, and it, it becomes too consuming. It takes over too much, much of your world. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it does, and, and also hate breeds more hate. Right. Um, and, and that's obviously a problem. But do you think that there's ever a time when um, feeling uh, hate towards anything is justified? That's a tough one to answer because I, because it depends on the individual, it depends on the circumstances. I'm thinking of, um, oh, I'm thinking of some, um, current events, maybe yeah. like Israel. I mean, the things like th these right. things where there's such strong feelings and so it's hard to judge someone being in those shoes, but at the same time, is it going to serve them or is finding another solution and another approach going to be more beneficial in the long run? Could the feeling be the impetus of maybe getting out of a bad situation or leaving yes. a situation that you really shouldn't be in because you need to maybe get over that? Exactly, it's the motivating thing the that motivating. we were talking about. It can be in so many different ways. Um, and just recognizing that if I'm feeling this strongly, I've gotta figure out what it is to, to make me move forward and get me out of this place. Let's yeah. talk about love and hate's not the opposite of love. What is the opposite of love? That's just one of those cheesy Pinterest quotes and I have absolutely adored it because it's so true because mm -hmm. as long as you're hating someone, they're still taking a lot of real estate up at your head and in your life. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to separate and have that I don't care moment, mm -hmm. then you know you've moved past and you've let that go. Mm -hmm. The indifference so, or apathy is, is maybe yeah, actually the opposite, yeah, right? Yeah, it just doesn't matter to me anymore. It doesn't have any more control over who I am. 
Right. You mentioned some of the things that you see on TV. Is is there a difference between hate and maybe maybe anger or injustice? Is there a difference between that? That's a great question. Um, I think it's really kind of how you define yourself because I think it, it, hate can incorporate all of those things. I kind of see it as an overarching thing that has all these yucky feelings that it's covering in, the, in the, its umbrella. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Can you give us some strategies for when you know you are, in fact, swallowing that poison and you want to stop, but it's such a strong emotion? I mean, it can be so hard. Well. I'm a counselor. I'm going to talk about journaling. It's what I do. <laughs> um, you know, write it down. And it helps you really, once you add words to what the feelings are, they become less threatening. Once you can identify what it is, then you can address it. So sometimes just writing things down and trying to find a way to forgive yourself within it, because you might forgive a friend who has these strong feelings, but it's harder sometimes to forgive ourselves. So um, journaling is a great way to, to do that. Talking it out with a therapist is also a great way to do that. Yeah. But anytime you have an opportunity to, to assign words, you're going to get through it faster. You can kind of get caught in the loops though, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's pretty easy if something hasn't gone your way mm -hmm. or how you- It becomes habitual mm -hmm. that you start to, that's how I react. And you have to interject, you have to become more mindful of, wait a minute, just because I have always reacted this way doesn't mean this time I have to. Doesn't mean you're gonna do it perfectly every time. Mm -hmm. You can stop and think, and I have a different approach this time. What am I gonna do instead? I'm gonna sit down and take some time myself and think it through before I react. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like the journaling idea as well. Yeah. And when you're talking to somebody though, who's maybe in the midst of something, like let's say you're in the midst of a contentious divorce or something yeah. and you feel so strongly, um, this hatred, right? Mm -hmm. um, is journaling going to get it to work? I mean, like, <laughs> no, it's going to take a lot more than that, most likely. <laughs> yeah, but it is one tool. No, right. but um, but it's why a lot of times in these contentious custody things, you have everything has to be in writing. The communication between yeah. the two people, because mm -hmm. once again, when you put it in writing, you identify it. It becomes a little less. Yeah. mystified. Sure. Yeah. Well, we love having you here. And well, yes. we have, there's you. no hate or apathy <laughs> or indifference. So thank exactly. you so much. Thank you so much.